Okay, so we are. My brain is on fire. Let me ask you a question. So we need to make a hand slide crook for a trombone slide. Um, our normal hand slide crook for a large bore is an oversized bass crook, which is like 600 bore, which is pretty normal for like a box style trombone. We're trying to make a crook for like a box style trombone. And I want to do like a 4562, you know, just normal wrap bore crook for it. And I don't have a die, and you can't just like make a tube that's 50,000 thick and put it on a trombone slide. So we're going to do a little technique that's pretty sketchy, but pretty cool and works pretty good. Um, one of my favorites. It's a really old school Miles technique where like I would never do this other than for one crook. Um, so right now we got pitch on. Good morning. Tubes, the thickness of your tube going into the bod is extremely important. Uh, most factories just use raw tubing just off the shelf and we'll just slam it through there and make parts that are out of round and no great. No great. We draw tubes to specific diameters that are undersized by a certain amount. It's just all not, I wouldn't say it's guess and check, but for the most part it's guess and check. Um, but I have our tube figured out for 562 to 600 tubes. We'll draw that real quick. I was just doing some last week. But alas. so that when I do weird shit like this, I can just run and grab it. Why is this tube weird? Is this die is a die I don't use often? That's why it was on the top shelf over there and not on the wall. There must be a reason I don't use it, so I'm gonna put it aside. Had a little thing and put it on it. I think it's full. I'm very good at filling pitch. One hour later. Here, which is 3D printed beautifully and then my little thingy, little guy, little guy there. Little guy frame. Little guy frame. Oh, yeah. I need to lower mine. Oh, yeah. You can buy these. Hi.
Come on, Crook. See, this is why you don't bend with pitch. This is a hard bend to do with pitch. You couldn't do something with a square easily. You can do it, just not easily. Okay. But she's getting balled out. She is getting balled out. So as long as it's like generally a pretty good bend. Close. It's and this pretty close. Is pretty close. So we'll uh, we'll get this bad boy in there. Oh, Mr. F***ing walking stick over here. It's really short. Yeah. The bend is in the wrong spot. Oh, f***. Kim's out, Kyle's in. He's doing a little hanker in okay. here. Everyone, feel like he just did some hankering. Everyone does a little hankering at some point in life. This is a test. Okay? Anchorage, Alaska, baby. I vow to never hanker on batches of more than two ever again in my life, okay? Are you happy? You happy? It's expensive to get flights to Anchorage. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What's all the gougies inside from? Is that from the cutoff wheel? Very deburring. That's from me deburring. Yeah. Looks pretty good otherwise. Really good, yeah. yeah. Bending levers. Pepsi Max counter. <laughs> Cleaning. So this, this, so the cool thing, what we're doing here, I should explain it. This is like the most hillbilly way to ball out a tube ever that you don't have a die for. Um, I developed this method when I was a child because um, I had a modern French horn crook die that I was trying, well, I needed a natural, like a, not natural, like a Viennese small bore horn crook. Um, all I had was modern horn dies, so I did this with a thing and I got a small bore crook out of it and it turned out fine. And it's, uh, it's been a long time since I've done it, but um, it should work pretty good as long as we get a good nose on her. Um, so basically this, this crook is our oversized large board base crook that was balled out in this die um, and I cut it in half on the bandsaw so there's a bit of a curve we're losing but we should have enough material to make up for that and then um, we're gonna actually put our blank of our new crook inside this crook fits pretty good just like this and then we put it back in this die and then we'll ball out our new crook inside of our old crook in this die, and it's pretty awesome. Pretty cool, so. Like that. Calipers that live at the ball out area, they have shit all over them. So we're about 10,000s at zero with the shit on them, so it should be 570, 562, that's good. There you go. Important thing here is get lots of loop in there. Whenever you do something sketchy, make sure you have an excess of lubricant. And we got our chaser balls here. Sounds like a good ball out so far. And another important thing is your tube over here isn't moving a lot. If it's moving a lot, your tube is way oversized to push the die open. The die will actually open if there's too much material in there. There's only two things that can happen. Your die will open or your ball will shatter. There's only two options. Those are some of our excess pitch in there coming out. Put that in the wrong bit. 
So now we have our crook with another crook on it. Crook inside of a crook. Okay. So that will peel off our other crook. go just like that and there you go 562 hand slide crook with a perfect ball out and it has the same center line span as the oversized crook so you could make a outer slide with this to test on the existing slide that we have which is pretty sick nasty and that is a damn good ball out for doing some sketchy hanky shit. whenever you can so this is important if you want the best playing and sounding instruments whenever you can you should not ball out parts, 100%. If you can bend parts accurately without balling out, your instruments will play better. And that's great for a lot of parts, but there's a lot of parts that you cannot accurately bend enough to have a consistent instrument. Um, so the next best thing is being good at balling out tubes, which is hard. And you might think, oh, f it, crunch it in there, like we kind of joke about hankering. Crunch it in there, push a ball through it, it'll work. When what you'll see on balled out parts. So this is the two piece die. That's what all ball out dies usually are. And you put the thing in there, you put it together. What happens is when a ball gets pushed through, if there's too much material to ball out, the die will open like we were talking about. The die will actually open like this. You'll see a little crack open up. And when you measure the crook that comes out of it, in this orientation, basically this dimension will be correct. Say it's half inch, it'll be half inch. But when you measure perpendicular to that orientation, it'll be big. So you end up with irregular wall thicknesses and oval crooks. And most manufacturers have oval crooks. It's my fucking pet peeve because it's so easy. You just gotta do some math. So even in this sketchy hillbilly fucking slumlord shit right here, we have our goal is 600, 600 by 562. With my calipers, but. 600, baby. Let's see what it is here, I didn't measure here yet. <laughs> Get a little over here, I know. And I'm not cranking on the calipers, look. Some kind of wiggle. Yeah, baby. That's the shit right there. That's how you do it. That's the secret sauce. And the good way to check, like I was saying, is you take some sandpaper, tape up for now. This is some 400 grit sandpaper. See the 004 right there? Just, just give a little rub. Rub a dub dub. Look at that. There's no lumpies, no weird shit. So, you could literally just hand sand this and buff it, which is the cool shit. But, okay. Hand slide crook in a sketchy die. I'm using pitch for the sake of brevity. Because with my, uh, okay, I turned the hot plate off. Sorry, false alarm. I thought I was going hotter, I was going less hotter. 